um, from the programming that we are offering to, you know, what we do athletically from year to year. And it's just really an exciting time to be getting on board. So I want to thank you all for taking some time out tonight to join us for this uh, presentation. Uh, we have a lot of things on deck for you. Um, and from what I understand, I think we may have the offering offering of some giveaways as well towards the end. So definitely stick around for that. Um, my favorite price is always free. So, you know, let's make sure we stick around for that. Um, and we'll just dive right in. I'm going to go ahead and attempt to share my screen and hopefully the Internet gremlins won't get in the way. So like I said, I am Principal Bruce Jackson. Um, it has been an interesting journey here. Uh, one thing that I do like to say about East, and for those of you that caught the um, video that we sent out, if you haven't seen East lately, you really haven't seen us at all. Um, the story that can be told around the city of our, you know, not so distant past three or four years ago is definitely not reflective of the space and place that we are at now. Um, when we talk about implementing the International Baccalaureate uh, program in the school to really changing the entire climate and culture of the physical space and just also the social aspect of school itself, um, an uh, entire focus on improving the instructional quality that our students receive every day. I mean, we've done a complete revamp. Um, as I said to my staff, when we entered into this new year um, coming into 2021, definitely you can never walk into the new year expecting different things being the same old person. And that is an approach that I take every single year with our school and really every single day. Um, I really view every day as our school leader as an opportunity for myself to grow, but also our staff and our students as well. Um, and we try to hold on to that spirit of positive connections, positive energy and righteous intention with every decision that we make. Um, just some information on our administrative teams. And if you have any, our, the members of our administrative team if you have any questions, I will pause this slide on the screen briefly just so you can jot some of that down our assistant principal charles woodall dean of instruction rachel autry our school counselor chanel kesey ib coordinator scott wofford and our media special specialist and parent portal liaison mrs carrie edgens um and their emails are right underneath and um Luckily enough, all of our email addresses happen to be our first and last names with the period in between. So if you can just remember the names and put the at MNPS.org on the end, you'll be able to contact us. I want to encourage you all to reach out to us and ask us a million questions. There's only one thing that you can put in an email to us that will frustrate me, and that is the line, I'm sorry if I'm getting on your nerves with all of these questions that does not exist at our school. So please ask as many questions as you can. Um, unfortunately, due to the COVID virus, we don't have the opportunity to actually walk the physical space of the building right now. Um, we are in plans to have a small video up very shortly on our social media platforms and our school website www.eastnashvillemagnetmiddleschool.com just to showcase all of the physical changes to the building that we have made um, since August. Um, and for if you have kids who are already enrolled at East Middle or if you happen to have taken a tour with us uh, in the past uh, before COVID hit, even in watching that video, you will see the changes that we've been able to make. And I will just keep on reiterating that point that if you really haven't seen us lately, 
you're in for a treat um, because we have a lot of fantastic things happening right now. Our academic overview is very simple. Um, we are a school that really serves as that starting point for kids when they get into the secondary phase of their education that will prepare them to take advanced and more rigorous courses when they get to high school and then also um, any academia approaches that they have beyond that. Um, we take the approach of ensuring that we deliver high caliber and rigorous quality instruction to our students with a guiding and helping hand. So it's one of those places where we have the expectation that this is a place that everyone can come and achieve and excel. And we are really designed to meet kids where they're at and push them beyond where they think that they can go. So a lot of times, you know, as people, we have these kind of, we walk in with the glass ceiling on our own success at some points, and we, you know, kind of operate in the parameters of our own hangups. And what we really strive to do is push through that glass ceiling. And we know that once we turn a person on to success, it's really hard to stop them. Um, that was one of the reasons that we really wanted to um, bring in the IB programming, international baccalaureate programming to our school, because one thing that we understood about our kids, and I'm a father of three myself, is I think one of my biggest points of frustration with talking to my, my kids, and one of them's in college, other one's in the seventh grade, and then I have a four-year-old, is they have a lot of information. And our access to information is more prevalent than it ever has been in human society because we all basically walk around with a little computer in our pocket. So memorization, rote facts, and all of those types of things, although they are still kind of important, that's not really the guiding principle when it comes to education and success in life. Um, I think what we all can admit, regardless of where your politics lie or anything like that, one area that we tend to struggle with is critical thinking and problem solving and really objective thought and taking all the information that we have and crafting it into a new and productive idea that everyone can embrace, even though they may not agree, but they can understand it and we can have dialogue on that and come to even better conclusions than where we started at in its inception. Right. And so that's what the IB programming will do for our students as it has done for millions of students. Right. It is a framework of thinking and learning and teaching that operates on the idea of conceptual and contextual knowledge and learning and understanding of different ideas. Um, there are expectations that come for students who choose to enroll at East uh, Magnet Middle. Uh, we're looking for motivated individuals who are willing to work hard. They're willing to accept challenges and tasks and assignments, have a high interest in taking honors courses, uh, interest in extracurricular and enrichment activities with a desire and achievement in all courses. Of course, they have to be willing to step up to the task of completing that service learning project that comes a part of being an IB student and then just also be an active participant in our East Eagle community. Now, one thing that you don't see on here, you don't see anything on here that says my expectation is every student that walks through this building has a standardized test score of this or has is walking in with a predetermined achievement level of that because that's not what we're about. We are about the work. It is the work that makes us successful, not anything else. If we rely solely on what your previous achievement on this or that was, then that also may predetermine where your achievement is gonna end on a long enough timeline. So we like to take the approach of everyone is welcome, but the welcome has to come with, I'm willing to work. I'm willing to accept the challenge of a more rigorous curriculum. I'm willing to accept the challenge of having my thinking pushed in different directions over different ideas. Even though I may not necessarily agree with that on the front end, I'm willing to have an open mind and objective heart to those ideas so I can learn, grow, and develop as a human being. Um, just speaking more of our IB curriculum, uh, or excuse me, our IB programming, um, 
I'm going to turn things over to Mr. Wofford to he again, he's our IB coordinator. He's on right now just to kind of speak to some of those things. And just give me one moment. Can everybody see the slide that says IB middle years program grade six through ten? Yes. Yes. Yes, we can see it. OK, OK, take it away, Scott. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to talk. Um, my name is Scott Wofford. I am the. Um, I think there might be some uh, echo on my stuff. I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm the IB coordinator at uh, East Middle and East High. Um, I appreciate the chance to uh, to share some of the, the finer details about meeting some of the goals that we have as a school that Mr. Jackson shared. Um, we are a couple years into our journey to get authorized as an IB school, both us and the high school. Uh, and we're gonna be offering two specific programs, the middle years program that um, will be featured at both schools from grades six through 10. Um, and uh, the IB diploma program that'll be for grades 11 uh, and 12. So if you're a student at East Middle all the way up to grade 10, um, you will be uh, an IB MYP student. Uh, fifth grade um, will uh, be sort of a ramp up to that. Um, some of the, the features of an IB curriculum are that the, uh, the, the courses are planned um, to be more conceptual in nature and to be explored in context. Um, our our um, teachers plan uh, according to a, a unit plan uh, template that um, all IB classrooms around the world use. Um, it gives them a lot of flexibility to build in a lot of big ideas. Um, classrooms are inquiry based, um, and that's designed to push students to think in a lot of different ways and to share their learning in a lot of different ways as well. Uh, and we ask students in those classes to share their learning in authentic assessments. It gives them a lot of student choice in what it looks like um, and how they get their learning across. Um, like we started with, um, that won't start in earnest until the sixth grade. So fifth graders can expect to walk into um, classrooms and be introduced to some of these elements uh, over the course of the year. Um, one of the best parts about IB is what's called the IB Learner Profile. Um, it's 10 characteristic traits that um, all IB learners strive to become. Uh, and an image of that is on a different slide than Mr. Jackson's got. But, um, we're all here today being communicators and we're all trying to get, be more knowledgeable about it. Um, and we are going to be working to um, we're going to be working to to orient students along the way um, with what those traits look like uh, in themselves. And by the end of this fifth year, uh, fifth grade year um, for them to feel like they are ready to take the plunge into some more conceptual classrooms and feel like they are an NYP student and know what's ahead of them. Um, what you can expect in the um, MYP program from grades six through 10, um, there are eight subject groups. Um, they're pretty fairly traditional. Language and literature, language acquisition, which for us will be Spanish. Um, individuals and societies, which is humanities. Sciences, mathematics, arts, um, physical and health education, and then a really unique class that um, we're excited to announce. Uh, we are the only school in Metro that will be having a full-time design teacher but design. Um, on top of that, there uh, are some grade specific but student chosen service requirements there every year. Um, learning doesn't necessarily have to happen in the classroom. There are two projects, an eighth grade community project that gets students in teams to engage with their community to, uh, to fulfill uh, some goals, and a 10th grade capstone project that the high school is actually starting right now. Um, I would love to learn uh, to, to answer some more questions for you in the future, um, and I hope that you reach out to me with your questions and I'm excited to meet you in person once we all get back in person and everything. Thanks for the uh, opportunity to share some things about the program and uh, look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, sir. So as far as school goes for us, we do operate on an eight to three bell schedule. That's a six period day schedule. Um, and we have, we offer all of the um, main core classes that all other middle schools offer, English, math, science, social studies, our related arts um, offerings for the coming year will be in five different area, five different areas, art, PE, Spanish design, 
music. <clears throat> um, and then we also have our personalized learning time, which is something that I think that's standard across the board um, in all of our schools. Um, that main focus of that um, personalized learning time, that PLT, is to really bridge the gaps, um, just to fill in and address some, some of those um, academic deficiencies that some students may have um, or bring to the table. Um, one thing that we have to own and understand um, is that we have really been away from the face-to-face -face space since last March. So as PLT is not a new thing in our middle schools, it is going to be our made one of our major points of emphasis uh, going forward because that is a time dedicated each day where we get to address those skill gaps in our students. Um, basically, we have time built into our schedule to catch our kids up. Um, and I know as a parent myself, and I know a lot of you all feel the same way, we just struggle with this idea of feeling that our kids are getting farther and farther behind. And so when that parent survey comes out, um, as it has a couple times even this school year about do I send my kid, do I let them remain virtual? I mean, it's a struggle to make that decision for some of us because like, well, I, I don't know about the pandemic, but then also I don't want my kid missing out on the higher level of education that I know kids just receive when they're in that face-to-face -face space. So I want you to really fear not that at East, we are really committed to making sure that that PLT period that the kids will have and do have every day is focused on making sure that we address those gaps, those things that they are missing in instruction to catch them up um, and to keep them going forward. Um, one of the awesome things about student life at East is not just the academic programming that we're offering, but also the extracurricular activities um, that kids are able to be involved in. Um, the beauty of our location, our physical space, is we are literally right next door to the high school on the same campus. So when you walk out of our building and look to the right, you see the high school right there. Um, one of the highlights of that collaboration and in that space is the success of the band program overall. Um, if you've seen anything band or music related in the city, or paid attention to any of that over the last couple of years or so, you know that our high school band is knocking it out of the park. Um, they just received a $70,000 donation to their band program, which is truly just a representation or just indicative of how successful that program is. The fantastic thing about it is the band director on the high school works in conjunction with the band director and music teacher on our middle school side. So when we talk about teaching kids instrumentation and we're talking about giving them that skill set to not only be successful with learning how to play, but then also taking that skill into possible scholarships for school and just also having a skill that can really earn them a paycheck for the remainder of their life. So the idea of participating in that band program that carries itself from middle through high school and then pushes kids to get into college um, is a fantastic opportunity for our students. Other extracurricular activities that we offer are animate club, student council, uh, GSA, library ambassadors, book club, uh, Girl Scouts, NASA, the Ali mentoring program for boys, Girls Inc, yoga, uh, so it's just a wide variety of things for kids to get involved with. Um, and that's really what we mean by becoming a, a productive and active member of our Eagle community. Um, one thing that I have stressed to my leadership team and my staff uh, when it comes to the creation of clubs, um, even in this virtual space, as we, as we have talked about that, a lot of times the approach is, from the adult side and adults in the school buildings come up with clubs and then we have kids sign up for them. Now, I don't know about you, but I know where my personal interests lie. And so my thought and my direction for our clubs is let the students decide what the clubs are going to be. Let the students decide how they want the clubs to run. And then we have adults sign up to be a part of the clubs. 
as the sponsors instead of the other way around. So it's really just a student led approach to clubs and activities for students. Um, because again, I can't say that I want you to be an active member of the community if you never have the opportunity to express your voice within the community. And these are just a few pictures of our students from different activities over the past few years. Um, if you look in the right hand side from our um, fall festival drive through um, this year to a pep rally, uh, just different things. I think you might even catch a snapshot of me in there cooking pancakes for everyone. Um, so just different things for kids to be involved in and just trying to convey like the excitement and really just the joy that kids have in our school community. It's really a place where kids come and they feel as though they're accepted. Um, everyone can find a place at East and a peer group to associate themselves with. Um, something new that we have added this year is a school store. So we are really looking to incentivize students in many different ways. Um, one of the first things that we were able to accomplish my first year at East was reducing the discipline rate uh, by close to 90% in one year. So, and I told my leadership team that the easiest thing we're gonna do is to cut the discipline problems out. The challenge is gonna be increasing the level of instructional rigor. And that has proven to have been the case and we have wholeheartedly accepted that challenge and it has bared a lot of fruit for us. So my idea is school is not the place where kids should come where they feel as though their behavior is the focus of the day school should be a place where kids are celebrated not only for their achievement but also the effort that they put in to achieve because the life lesson in that is you can work if you have it in you to work hard you can get what you want and i believe that kids should be recognized for their effort um so we have adopted the live school program in the school we acknowledge kids they are able to earn live school points every day from a variety of things um that they accomplish efforts that they make and from those live school points, they are able to then take them and purchase things in our school store. And those things vary from school supplies to school branded uh, materials and apparel, such as clothing, hats, hoodies, T-shirts, bags, desktop Bluetooth speakers, um, just all sorts of cool stuff. So we really want to make the point of putting kids in a position to take ownership of their effort and then really see the results of it in a very tangible way. As far as sports goes, uh, we offer the whole complement of sports that every other school offers football, basketball, soccer for girls and boys, volleyball, wrestling. We were the city champions in wrestling um, for the past two years. Um, track we walked away with medals and that as well so we really we we as east has been known to do we carry on that tradition and legacy of being a top quality powerhouse in a lot of different areas athletically so if you have a child that is inclined athletically and wants to be a part of a winner um you really can go no further um this is a great place to be Um, and for this portion of the presentation, I will pause um, and I will say for more information on different things or just to keep up with the happenings that we have going on at school, please log in to our website, www.eastnashvillemagnetmiddleschool.com. With that being said, I think I'm turning the presentation over. Uh, is it to you, Mrs. Autry? Um, I think, um, think Miss Kesey is next. Okay. Hey, I'm here. This is Miss Kesey, the school counselor. Just want you all to have an opportunity to hear from one of our parents. Uh, Miss Latasha Watkins has a sixth grade student at our school. She has been 
great at staying on top of things for her child. She's been really involved um, and she's a great communicator. So I wanted you all to hear a little bit about her experience as a parent and, and her son's experience at ease. Ms. Watkins, are you on? Yes, I am. Okay, you can go ahead. Okay, like she said, I'm Latasha Watkins, my son. He is in the sixth grade. Um, we started off there um, just for the fifth grade. And honestly, to be honest, I was kind of upset because I wanted him to go to meds. And he was on a waiting list. And I'm like, okay, East is it. East is where it's closer to my job. It's right there. It's, it's it. And so I'm actually glad that he did not get into meds, honestly. Um, because at this point in time, like he does, he is good with academics, but I feel that East has something that Mix probably don't or won't have. And that is the communication. Um, I hear about a lot of, oh, I have to call my kids parent, I mean, call their, their teacher. And then I have to go above the teacher. I have to do this. I have to do that. And then it's like, it's strictly work, work, work. There is no incentive or if a child might need an incentive, this it's not there for them. Um, I can truly say from experience, when Mr. Jackson said there is no question that they can't answer or they don't care about the, the questions, that is true. I literally call them for anything and everything. Um, I go up to the school, I talk to them. Um, I'm one of them parents that I'd rather for you overly to communicate than not to communicate at all. And I have not gotten told, please don't use this number, don't call, don't come, or none of that yet. So I think I'm still in the clear. But um, far as the teachers, it's not as, oh, we just here to do our job, leave us alone. It's after school hours. We'll talk to you during school hours, um, all of that. No. I have actually had teachers to contact me after school hours um, from a question or email that I've sent thinking that it'll get returned during school hours. No, it got returned within five or 10 minutes. If not, I don't know if they all have their work email on their phone next to them, but um, yeah, it got responded to very quickly. They do everything in a timely manner. Everything is professional. Even if there is a disagreement, like I don't think that you can disagree in a more professional term. Um, I mean, they are humans and they do make mistakes. Of course, just like I do and just like everyone else. But so far, I am satisfied with this school above, like, anything. Like, it's even down to Miss Kesey helping me um, with my other, my goddaughter, whatever, just helping me, period. Um, it's just on everything. School-related, not school-related, work-related, computer-related. It's everything has all come down to literally getting the help that I need. If not, then, hey, I'm going to the next person. I give you an answer and I get the answer later on. Um, I literally asked my son's advisor a question that I knew that she didn't have a, the answer to and I knew she would have to ask someone, but I was not expecting her to call, to text me back within two or three minutes. Um, they do communicate. They communicate with everything. They let you know good, bad, all of that. Um, all of the programs that Mr. Jackson had mentioned, they're not just there just because to give the school a good name. They actually do help you and your kids. It's not just, oh, that's another thing. The school is not just for your kids. It's actually for you too. As a parent, I've gotten help through this school so much um, with the knowledge and everything. I went to Hillsboro, so that's an IB school. And I didn't know anything about IB until I got into high school. So the fact that they're doing that now and everybody's like doing on the same page, to me, that that should show the amount that they want to push your kid to the next level. Um, again, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. I, when people ask me, what school do you recommend? Hey, what about this school? What about, I don't know what about them. I just know about this school because I've been here. Um, I'm sorry to chat, but I've been here and I've, I've loved it. So that this school is the, what did it go off? No, it didn't. I don't know what happened. Oh, 
there it goes. <laughs> the school itself is is amazing. Honestly, it's it's amazing all the way around, um, down to the teachers, the guidance counselors, the principals, um, everyone in there. They're all on the same page. They want to help your kid, and trust me, your kids is going to get help. Thank you so very much. And that really is our, you know, our focus. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Ms. Watkins. Yeah, I'm, you know, that is our focus. Um, when we talk about a school community, I mean, I say it in the call out every week. I refer to the, I refer to our East Magnet Middle School community because that's really what I believe in. Unfortunately, um, somewhere along the way, and I'm pretty sure that probably started to happen even before the my 20 years starting education, somewhere along the way, the idea of school community has kind of gotten away from us in some areas. And it almost feels as though when you walk into a building, it's like teachers have their guards up, administrators have their guards up, kids have their guard up, parents have their guard up. And it takes so long to get to the meat of the matter and get everyone to the table um, because every we have to fight through all these barriers and these preconceived notions about what people's intentions are. And that's not a community to me. Now, we'll say community doesn't mean that we're always going to agree. Community definitely does not mean that everyone's always going to do it right, us included. We're going to be wrong sometimes. We're not going to get it right sometimes. But we are mature enough and we are invested enough in the success of our students to say we got it wrong. I have no problem with apologizing if I get it wrong. I want to make sure that we get it right. So my approach is never going to be to beat a kid up, beat a, beat a parent up, beat a teacher up or anything. If we get it wrong, let's just make let's acknowledge that we got it wrong and then let's come up with a plan to get it right. And that's community to me. And that's a school community. And when you start thinking in those kinds of terms, then you can bring everyone to the table and we can hash things out and we can figure things out and everyone feels supported. Um, and so that, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that I, we have parents that can come on and speak to that and actually speak that they have felt that and lived that um, as their child has matriculated through East Middle. That's that's just an awesome feeling to know that it is working and it is seen because that's, that's really our core belief. Um, is just the child and the family and just everyone. We're putting everyone first above everything else. Um, the, my favorite statement is life happens to everyone at the worst possible time. So that doesn't mean that the show for that individual has to stop. We lift them up and we carry them on through so we can all make it at the end. Um, and that's just how we approach our day to day and our week to week and our entire school year. I think we had some, I don't, and I'm not sure if they were able to make it. I think we may have had some students who were um, going to speak. Is that correct? Hey, yes. Yeah. So um, this is Miss Autry. I am the Dean of Instruction here at East. I have um, just a quick video that I put together. Um, it's It's not our production piece that we want to put out there um, on our website just yet, but it is something that I wanted to, to put together um, for you guys just to get a glimpse of what our school looks like um, in the inside and to hear um, some testimonials from a few students. So I'm going to swap my um, screen over real quick and then, um, and it's short, it's, it's just a short two, two and a half minute video. And then maybe we could open it up for some questions and answers. Okay, let me give this a go.
Ms. Autry, I think we're missing the audio here. Ms. Autry, we're not getting the sound. Oh no, you're not getting the sound. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, hang on one second. There's supposed to be a sound button you have to click. Yeah, you know, I've been doing this long enough. You would think I would know that by now. And I thought I did that. Okay, let's see if I can go back and figure that out real quick. Are you guys good lip readers? Were you reading his lips? I'm sorry about that. When you screen share, um, this share tray pops up and there's a toggle switch on the share tray that you have to click to enable sound. Yeah, see, I thought I did that. Okay, let's... You're gonna have to unshare and then reshare. Yep, 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 yep. There we go. Yep. Okay, we're going to just restart it from the beginning. Is that good? Did you guys hear that? The music playing? Jason Hazley and I'm a student at East Nashville Middle School and a reason why you should come to East is because it's really good teachers, teach you a lot and it's a really good school system and program and what makes East great is its pride and that's it for me. I'm in the seventh grade and I've been to East for one year. What makes East the best school is like how they uh, appreciate students. We love our students and never like the only thing that hurts. I love East. That's what I love about East. And what makes East. because it allows you to be yourself. You get to be fun, creative. You don't get judged. Like, it's like a family. I love Hopefully you guys um, got to see a glimpse of our school um, and heard from a couple of students and um, I will post that video up on our website 
And we will also, like, like Mr. Jackson said, we are in the process of creating something that is a little bit more professional and highlights a little bit more of the, the school. Um, we are working, it, it's a, it, we're working right now on um, some different areas within the school building that um, are completely different and we're super excited about and we can't wait to showcase those to you guys real soon. So we have some questions in the chat. Let me see if I'm go from the bottom and scroll up. The first one I see is what type of student interactions is there between grade levels? Many of our kiddos left the school buildings as third graders, and it's a bit scary to think of them hanging out with eighth graders. Um, you're absolutely right. Um, so one of the benefits of our building is it is naturally structured as physically um, to kind of address that concern. So there are four floors. So there, there's the main floor, then there are two floors above it, and then there is the basement floor where you will find um, the lead to the cafeteria and the gymnasium. Each grade level has its own floor. So your fifth grade babies will be downstairs, and then the eighth grade babies will be all the way upstairs. So there are literally three floors of space in between them. So your fifth grade kids will have all their classrooms right in one area. They'll just go from room, then they'll go across the hall to the next room, then they'll go down to their other room. Related arts is right there. Cafeteria is right there. The gymnasium is right there. So they live most of their life right there in the fifth grade hallway, and they have very limited interaction with any of the older grade levels. Um, let me see. I know I saw another one. What does a classroom look like during the PLT class period? Are the kids spending time on a computer program with direct instruction from a teacher in small group or doing homework? Yes. Um, <laughs> the answer is yes. Um, you can find kids up, uh, working through their iReady programming which is kind of a self-guided um, program that they can do in school or at home. So even when we get back face to face as Metro has guaranteed every kid will keep their laptop. Even before COVID, we were already just about one to one with laptops anyway for students. Um, so every kid will have the availability of their laptop, which they will be able to do iReady intervention at home and it meets them where they're at. They take a diagnostic and whatever their reading level or math level is, it starts the questioning and teaching from there and it, they just go on forward with it. So if they get up to the 12th grade in iReady, they just get up to the 12th grade reading or math in iReady in the whatever grade they're in. Um, but we also understand that that is not for everyone and that can't be the one all catch all cookie cutter response to kids when we're talking about intervention. Um, so there is also the small group approach. There is the direct instruction approach. We align. That's why um, the things like the map tests and having your kids log in for the map test is so important. We actually use that data to determine groupings for kids when we talk about intervention to make sure that they can get the help that they need. Do you have to be in the sixth grade to start athletic programming or can you start in the fifth? Unfortunately, due to TSSAA guidelines, um, which is the governing body that uh, covers um, all athletics in the state of Tennessee, uh, athletics does have to start with the sixth grade. Now, one of the things that I was concerned about was I, people always want to forget about our fifth grade babies. Um, and I want to make sure that you all have things to be a part of as well. So that's why we made the decision to do things that I know would be more so geared towards younger kids. But I just think it's important because, again, I said to you before, I really think it's value. I really think it's key that every kid feels like they have their own space at East. So we have since installed a rock climbing wall in our gymnasium um, for all that really will, you know, should be fantastic for all of our fifth and sixth grade students. We're also in talks right now to start intramural 
programming and athletics with our community center that is a couple blocks away. So um, it's not something that we're, 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 we're trying to make an effort to make sure every kid has an opportunity to participate in something. Um, it just doesn't have to be a club. If you are interested in sports and all of those kind of things, we're trying to get creative in ways to make sure that every kid has a space and, you know, can find their own and put together their own path at East. Uh, is band a year commitment? Uh, does the band class replace art or other related arts classes? So yeah, band is a year long commitment now just because we want to make sure, well, okay, so just because we want to make sure that kids who are really interested in instrumentation, as we know, in order to get good at something, it takes practice. Um, I have had the experience of my child, you know, at home trying to learn how to play the instrument. And when we were first starting off, it was like, okay, can you close the door? But as time goes on, they improve. So we, we want to immerse them in that environment. Um, but we do still try to make the effort to making sure that they have the time to play as well. So even if your kid is saying I'm in band and I want to take band and this is my focus, we want to make sure that, you know, at least once a week they get the opportunity to go to the gym or just get involved in some PE type of activity to run and play because kids need to have the opportunities, to, you know, to run and play. Are the kids on rotating blocks? How do related arts classes work from one semester to the next? Do you take all of them or do you choose between them? So no, we're not on rotating blocks. You will have a set schedule. Um, the middle school, the standard middle school schedule is you will, you will see each of your classes every day and it'll be a set schedule. So if you have um, English first period, then you may have social studies, then you would go to you know, your PLT block and your recess block and then your lunch block and then you'll wrap up your day with your related arts and then your other two core area classes. Um, well, let me see, I wanna make sure I get every part of the question. As far as related arts goes, related arts is on a nine weeks rotation. Um, so that would change every nine weeks. So you would have the opportunity to uh, experience each one of them, except for, of course, if you, made the band designation, then that would kind of pull you out of some of the related art rotation. Could we get a swim team in partnership with the community center? That is actually something that we were working on with the East Community Center before COVID hit. Um, yeah, we actually had, actually, I, I might even say working on, we actually already had it set up and we were going to be sending a group of, I think, 10 to 15 kids over to swim um, once a week, but then the world changed and, um, you know, <laughs> that story is that, but there's no reason why we won't get back to that once things kind of settle back out. Uh, I think I caught everyone in the chat. If I didn't, please post your question back again. Oh, um, another question. I really like the philosophy I'm hearing. How welcome are parents in the building before, during, and after school? Um, so one of the things is we don't have school buses, of course, because we are a magnet school. So we tend to not let students in until a certain time of the day and then we try to clear the building after school is over for us this is really important because it's about the safety and security of our students we do share a campus as far as you know the the block with the high school so we want to make sure that after school is over we don't promote the idea of kids just hanging out just to hang out so if you are a middle school student and this and this is and I apologize if this comes across as strong, but I really care about the safety and security of our students. So in this space, I'm speaking directly about our students. I can't be concerned with anyone else in the city when it comes to what our kids are doing. I need to make sure our kids are secure. So my approach is very simple. If you are an East Magnet middle school student, 
unless you are with a sponsored group after school, whether that be tutoring or some sort of enrichment thing or whatever, I need you outside of the building where we have adults supervising, and I need you to make sure that your ride, however way you're getting there, getting home, we get you home. Um, even as East Nashville is going through as many changes and all of that, it's still the city. And so I don't like the idea of young kids being out in East Nashville unsupervised as the winter months of school roll in and it gets dark early. I don't like the idea of that. So my goal is to clear the campus as early as possible unless kids are engaged in, you know, in specific activities that are supervised by adults. And I also don't like the idea of kids being in the building before everyone's there and we're ready to supervise because I just because that when you leave people unsupervised, you leave the chance of bad choices and interactions that I don't need. We just don't need to have happen. Not to say that I think they will, but I we're talking about people. Right. So um, to circle back around to your question. Yes, I you can come as often as you want. I mean, I always encourage parents to come up if you want to see what's going on in the classrooms. Now, you know, of course, we don't just do the walk in and walk up approach. But yeah, if you want to come in, let us know you're coming or whatever the case may be. Absolutely. Um, when we hopefully pull out of this COVID thing sooner than later and we can kind of take the masks off and all of that kind of thing, you know, I would be more than willing to. And we have in the past parents come in if you want to sit down and observe a classroom just because you want to see what's going on. And then if you want to meet and reflect afterwards, that's fine. I mean, I encourage that it's the community. Then this is your child's education and the shared accountability of it all. So absolutely, you know, come on up. Let's, there's nothing to hide. I mean, I don't believe in a dog and pony show. We're gonna do what we're gonna do. So come on up. Is there a way to observe classes like we would be able to do in an in, hold on, thing popped up, in an in-person tour? Um, I'm pretty sure we might be able to figure something out. I'm. I would have to check on the legalities of that. I know there was a huge debate at the beginning of this school year and toward the end of last school year about the recording of classes and where those recordings could be posted. Um, just be, so when we're talking about having members of our community that are not necessarily right there as school community members right now and other kids being on camera, I would have to check into the legalities of that. So I don't want to say, oh, absolutely right now, because I just don't know. Um, I would love to say yes, but I don't want to get sued. Um, let's see. Is there before and after care on the site? Yes, we do. We have had fun company and we have uh, signed back on to continue our partnership well, um, with the YMCA NASA program. So. Yes, there is after school care. We do not have before school care. The library, which is directly across the street, and there is a crossing guard there as well, um, also offers an after school program or after school supervision for kids. And there is a kid zone over there with um, computers and just organized games. And I mean, of course, uh, who wouldn't love the idea of their kids spending time after school in a library? I mean, I just don't see how you can go wrong with that. So, um, yeah, that's right there, you know, right across the street. Uh, can you talk about class size right now? We are probably looking at classes being between uh, 17 to 20 kids. Uh, we will always max out at 25 kids in a classroom because I've capped our enrollment at 400. So if you have four core classes on every grade level, and then you have your four related arts offerings. In our case, we have five. Then you just divide that 400. So that puts about 25, 20 to 25 kids in each class. Um, so our enrollment this year um, jumped up dramatically and we were at 370. And um, I'm thinking our projection is going to be even higher than that. That's why I said to you all, if you're interested, uh, please fill out the application and get your name on early. Um, we have been on a steady increase from the time I got there. I think we started at 319, uh, 311, 319 when I first got to East. 
Um, and we were up to 370-380 this year. And that is in two to three years. So just doing the math on that, if we keep on that projection, and I have capped us at 400 because I want to make sure we keep the class sizes low and manageable, you can kind of figure that one out for yourself as far as where we're going. And yes, uh, Ms. Watkins definitely has been up to the school many times. Um, staff turnover is not high at all, um, but I, when you talk about staff turnover, um, it can it it can sound like a complex response, but it's really not to me. Um, I am a person that does not believe that there are many bad teachers in education at all. I don't believe that there are many bad administrators. I don't think there are many bad students. I think that there are some teachers who are working at a school that does not align with their beliefs. I think that there are some students who are enrolled at schools that don't align with their beliefs. The beauty of education is there are hundreds of thousands of schools around the country run by millions of people with all different thoughts about what the school climate and culture should be and the academic approach and all of that. So I will say to in response to that question about staff turnover, staff turnover has 100% aligned with my approach that we will believe in children and their success and their safety, and we will push them academically to improve and be better, and we will hold them accountable. We will not rake them over the coals. We will expect them to make mistakes because they are children and they will face the consequences for them, but then they will return to our community as productive and valuable members, because that's the way the world should work. So anyone who may have felt differently about school, I don't begrudge their thoughts. I don't say they're right or wrong. This is just what I want for our students. I want our students to go through an IB program. I want our students to be able to compete with all kids around the district and around the country. I want kids to come to our school and feel proud of where they are and feel like they are a part of something that's bigger than them and they contribute to it in even the smallest way. I want our kids to feel safe. I want our kids to enjoy themselves and I want our kids to learn something. And more importantly than all of that, I want our kids to leave our doors and feel as though they're better for having went to East Middle. So that's my approach to it. So our staff turnover, I think, has reflected that. Indeed. Let's see if you have any other questions. Catherine Prather, I know you. <laughs> That's great. They must have got the money in the mail. Awesome. Good job. That's another good thing about East. Our checks don't bounce. Uh, do you have any policies regarding homework for middle school students, for example, limits on the amount? Um, I mean, the policy for homework is I, I think homework should be appropriate for um, practicing the skill. I don't believe in the idea of busy work. Um, I believe that if a kid can show you something uh, with five problems, why are you giving them 500 problems? So a, a homework is going to be appropriately given based upon the skill that is being addressed at that time. So I can't tell you that from day to day or week to week, you're going to have a set amount of homework and it will never increase or decrease, you know, on that metric. It's just it's a, it will be appropriate for what we're doing. Mm 
Yes, please. Yeah, yes, yes. Thank you for your excitement, sharing your excitement. Um, can I email a kind of specific question about our family traveling abroad for part of the year? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do we have a PTO? Yes, we do. Any needs that the community can help you with? Um, yes, and I would like to discuss that. I'm open to any and every possibility. The fantastic part about us being nestled in the Five Points area of East Nashville, which is really like a, the, the, the gem of the city once you get past the tourist trap of downtown, is it's such a cosmopolitan area to be in. And so, um, yeah, and we have kids coming from literally every part of the city. So we truly get to define our culture because we're not having to be stuck in the idea of, well, we serve this one community, so this is what we have to do. So I'm always looking for community partners because this is an ever evolving shift that we're steering here. So please, yeah, let, reach out to me. My um, email bruce.jackson at mnps.org. Um, let's talk about it. I'm, I'm, I'm up for it, please. Thank you, Ms. Cobb. Uh, we, we do try. Uh, what makes you most proud to be principal at East Middle Magnet? Um, seeing the change in our school, you know, um, before I got here, this, there were, it, I don't know, it was so weird for people to say to me, oh, good luck. And it's kind of like, what's, what's going on? Who's over there? You know, it's like, are there still children there <laughs> or is someone else taking over? And so, you know, really seeing the buy-in from our staff, really seeing, sitting down and really having at the beginning some challenging conversations with parents, um, challenging conversations with kids and challenging conversations with, you know, some of the adults that we have on staff. Um, and the turnaround, the energy that's there, the feeling that you know people are happy to show up every day the kids enjoy being there when i go to the games and the parents is it's not the i couldn't wait to talk to you because we gotta talk you know it's not that it's not that now it was like that that first year but it's not that it's mr jackson where your son at where your kids at oh well, and we're just talking as people and so it's that feeling of community when you come into the building, when you come to our events, when you meet our parents like, you know, Miss Watkins, who's awesome. It's just that feeling of community. And that's what really makes me so proud. And that's what makes it worth it to me every day, because it doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like let me check some boxes to get my check to go on home. I'm sick of this. It doesn't feel like that. I mean, even our leadership team, believe it or not, we spent I mean, just I, when I'm looking back on text messages and Teams calls, they were off the clock this summer. You know, they're 10, 11 month employees. I, we probably talked on Teams meetings and text messages two to three times a week throughout the entire summer planning for the year. It's like we, it's like we couldn't stop because that's just the excitement of what we're building here. So that's what really makes me so proud is that it's just the work and it's it's a fantastic feeling to see things really turning around. Not for me, not because I want any accolades. You know, I, my goal is hopefully when I do leave East that the, Mr. Jackson is not even a name you brought up. It's just East is great. And because this is just what we're doing here. So that's, you know, it makes me feel good. What does it mean to be in IB candidate school? It just means we haven't completed the accreditation process. Um, so we are um, actually we have a very important meeting coming up, I think, within the month regarding that. So that's all it simply means. We, we are in the process of full accreditation. What do you look for in teachers when hiring them? So the answer to that I can give you, I recently conducted an interview with a teacher and she gave a response and it was probably the best response that I have heard anyone give um, 
really in 20 years. And it, it pretty much summed up everything that I believe in and look for in an educator. Um, she has a history. Um, so she is an exceptional ed teacher and she has a history in um, working in different areas, you know, from the alternative school setting to your special day school. So just a, a variety of experiences. Um, so I just make the assumption, of course, that if you are operating these different types of venues, then you probably have a um, good idea of strong classroom management strategies and all that. So I was just asking, you know, what, what would be some advice that you would give to a younger teacher or even a seasoned teacher who may be struggling with classroom management? And I'm not going to lie, my first thought was going to be that she was going to hit me with all of the cliche things, but you got to have a consistent approach. You got to make sure that you have your lesson plan structured. You have, and I, this is just what I was expecting. And she said, well, the first thing I would tell them is um, just ask them why they're here. And then I would ask them, do you really care about the kids? And so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like, okay, and I'm sure I probably made a face, um, but she just kept going. She said, because classroom management, once you get past all of your rules and your procedures, it really boils down to the relationship. And if you can't build a relationship with the kids, you'll never be able to manage a classroom. And so I would tell them and I would ask them, if you're here just for the check, and you're getting frustrated with the kids, then you shouldn't be in that classroom because you're never going to be able to manage it to the level that you want. I show up to school because I love working with kids, and so I don't have problems with classroom management. That's what I'm looking for. We can all, we, I'm telling you, as this new math thing that I can't figure out, because I promise you, I always thought one plus one equal two, I never knew one plus one equaled every other thing except for two. Um, so I can't wrap my head around that. We can get to that part of things. The main part of it is the relationship. Are you a person who's able to build a sustainable and authentic relationship, an appropriate relationship with a kid? If through that, through your talk, through your whatever, your teaching style, your whatever, and it doesn't have to look the same for everyone. You know, there's such, I believe in tough love. I believe in that old school approach sometimes. I believe in the new school approach. I mean, I believe in it all. There's value in it all, but the core is the same. Do you believe in kids? Are you scared of children? <laughs> if you are, this might not be the place for you because we're not going to allow you to manage a classroom out of fear. So we're not doing that. So it's just it's just the approach of, you know, their investment in kids, their belief in kids as people, not just as individuals that they have to dump curriculum down. You know, it's, it's kids looking at kids. Mr. Jackson, can you say a little about your work before you came to East? Sure. Um, so I started my journey. Well, I'm from Detroit, Michigan originally. Um, I had some grandiose ideas when I was younger about um, DJing and I was going to work at probably the Ford plant, Chrysler or whatever that kind of thing may be, which totally made sense back in the 90s. If you can remember, that was before the bottom completely fell out in the auto market <laughs> in, in Detroit. Um, my, my mom was like, that ain't happening. And I don't even know what you're talking about. So she said, you're going to college. So um, I ended up going to Tennessee State University, um, ended up majoring in political science, uh, constitutional law and secondary education. Uh, went on to start my teaching career at Stratford High School, learned a lot about teaching at Stratford High School. That's right. That's where I went, Mrs. Prather at. Um, and um, the interesting thing about Stratford, um, or I will say about my journey in education, is I think I was always put at the right place at the right time to learn what I needed to learn. So if you know anything about Stratford's journey in the city, um, it kind of fell on some rough times over there as far as academics and just, you know, di discipline issues. Um, they've since turned it around, are doing some amazing things there now. Uh, but just as that being my entry point, I really learned a lot about the importance of a relationship with a kid. Because if kids are turned up and fighting every week, you better have a good relationship with them if you wanna have a good class. So I learned a lot there about just people, you know, 
Um, I left there and became an assistant principal over the freshman academy at McGavick. Um, so if you know anything about McGavick's journey, they kind of went through a rough patch as well. They brought in a principal from Texas, Mr. Robin Wall, and he hired me over there. And the first thing he told me was that, you know, I'm bringing in, we got to, my thing for you is you got to make it safe up there. Um, and I'm looking at him like, you do realize you got about 600 kids up there in that academy. What are you talking about? And so he was like, Jackson, if you can't get it done, I'll find someone else. So that taught me about accountability. And there are some things in life that we just have to do because we just have to do them. And we're going to get it done because there's no other option. Um, and he held me to that expectation. He held the school to that expectation. And we turned the school and that freshman academy around. And we started some things that you probably see throughout the city, even to this day. Um, for those of you who have kids who have gone through high school and um, had the op opportunity of participating in that ninth grade commitment to graduation ceremony. Um, we started that at McGavick in my freshman academy because I said to my counselors at the time, you know, I really want to have something for our kids to celebrate them and really motivate them as ninth grade students to hold on for four years. And so we started that, you know, ceremony and just caught fire. And I looked up and was like, oh, wow, everybody in the district is doing this. So I was at McGavick for about seven years and I always have had have done well with kind of our wayward kids who struggled in a few areas. So I told myself, you know what, I really think I could turn some things around for kids at the alternative school. So I went over to the alternative school for a year with the intent of really trying to make some gains. But one thing that really frustrated me there was it seemed so stagnant. Um, not that we weren't doing great work, but I'm really about seeing the progress, not just holding kids in a place like a school jail. So that didn't work for me. So I left there, went to Stratford Middle School as an assistant principal for a few years. Um, had an amazing time there. It was like coming back home because Stratford, much like East, they share the same campus with the high school. So it was like that old feeling back on the block again. Um, and then from there, I was brought on to um, East Middle. Uh, thank you for joining us. Do you have any other questions? And thank you for being here. I think as people are typing, Ms. Autry, um, did you want to talk about the um, sign up thing the giveaway um yeah yeah miss kesey can talk on that i just i just dropped i know there's not very many people left here but i just dropped in the chat box sorry we're echoing there we go um just a quick video that mmps put out for um the enrollment um process it's a short video if you um are not familiar with with that process you can watch that video there as far as the option and choice and all of that um miss kesey i know did you want to um do some giveaways do we have some things that we can um can offer so i know we talked about this earlier miss audrey and i think the way we want to do it if you guys you talk to your students or parents to talk you know to your kids if you all can go to instagram or twitter and tag us in a post if you decide that east you know is going to be um your child's commitment for middle school so we want you to go on to one of our social media sites and audrey if you could put in the chat box i know it's um east eagles nest and then yep. put our twitter um account on there so we want, or if you just enjoy the presentation or you want to share some positive um, comments on there, we're going to be looking on those sites to um, respond to you guys and offer you some East apparel or some different things that we have in our live school store, in our school store. I would like to add that um, 
this is a little known fact. It's like one of the best kept secrets on campus. Um, parents, if you really want to get something done at East, if you have a suggestion and you want to make a change, even though Mr. Woodall and I are the principal and the assistant principal, Ms. Kesey and Mrs. Autry really run the school. So we do. if you get with them, you that that is them. on record. We are recording <laughs> this meeting. So, <laughs> Kesey, we have that on record. <laughs> we have it, yes. <laughs> I will deny that I was ever part of that. <laughs> I understand, Mr. Woodall. <laughs> I think that's all of them. I got so at Eagle East Eagles Nest's um, Instagram. Um, our Facebook page is East Nashville Magnet Middle School, and then our Twitter account is East Nash um, Middle. Yeah. And then we, um, our school website, I'll put that in there as well. We have the district um, website. That one is run by the district, so it's a little bit harder to keep that as up to date as we would like. I know they're, they are making some improvements on that right now. Um, East National Magnet Middle School. We went ahead and created our own website just so we could um, could could put information into that in, in a little bit quicker manner than the district run um, website. So I put that in the chat box as well. Yeah. Does that work, Mr. Jackson? That does work. Um, I think we are at a great place to stop. I want to thank you all for your attendance tonight and your questions, uh, your interest in East. Um, I know it's a big decision when we're talking about the next four years of your child's education, but I just want to reiterate to the point with everything that you've heard tonight, I think we have a great program and great offering for you. Um, come on aboard. Let us surprise you. Um, Check us out. If you do make that decision, make sure you tag us so we can get that free stuff out to you. Uh, now, just be mindful that uh, Ms. Autry and Ms. Kesey do run the school, but that also means they do make the home deliveries on those items. <laughs> so I'm looking for that. Um, but with that being said, I want to thank you all for joining us this evening. Please be safe. Um, like I said, ask as many questions. I encourage you to tour other schools as well. Make the most appropriate decision for you and your family. Um, and I hope to see you all in August. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys for joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>